In this video, I'm gonna show you the theme adjuster in Reaper. Now, in order to use the theme adjuster, we need to be using Reaper 6 default theme. So make sure under options and themes, we're using default six right here. Then we can choose the theme adjuster right here, which opens up and looks like this. Now there's different tabs in this window, track control panel, mixer control panel, custom colors, and envelopes. But in this video, we're gonna focus on the track control panel. We'll do the others in a few other videos. Now the purpose of the theme adjuster is gonna allow us to control how the track control panel looks. The controls and their sizes can all be controlled from this window. As you can see, there's three layouts to choose from, A, B, and C. We'll come back to that in a bit. First, I wanna show you how the default layout works. Let's go to the options menu and go down here to layouts, to track control panel, and here's where we set up the default layout for the track control panel. I have mine set to 150% on A, but you could choose B or C in many different sizes. And as you can see, there's five different sizes to choose from, but only three of them are gonna work for your computer. If you're using a high definition monitor, you're gonna use 50%, 75%, and 100%. But on my monitor, I'm only going to see 100%, 150%, and 200%, which changes the size of our controls in the track control panel. So if I choose 100%, it's going to look like this, with the controls a bit smaller. Or if I choose 200%, the controls are a lot bigger. But I'm going to choose. 150% A, which is gonna make my controls this size and use layout A as the default. So everything we do in this window is gonna affect the default tracks. But there is a global setting that's not affected by the layouts, and that's up here. For the folder indent, let's create a folder track over here. Down here are the child tracks. This is the folder. And notice it's indented over here. And that's set up right here to be folder indent one. That's by default. If we want it to be bigger, we can set it to two and indents twice as much, more max, it's three times as much, or we can make it smaller to a half, a quarter, an eighth, and no indent at all. So this track is still a folder for these tracks, but it's not indented. Let's put it back to the default. Let's take a look at this control. This decides if the controls on the track line up. By default, we could see they don't. The record button is not in line from the folder to the child tracks. If we want that, we could choose it right here. And now all the controls on the tracks are now lined up. No matter what indent size we choose, max, two, one, or smaller, all the controls are still gonna line up with the folder. But that's off by default, and this is set to one. So it's gonna look like this when we create folders by default. Let's put this back. And everything else in this window is based on layout. And like we set up before, layout A is the default. So everything we do over here is gonna affect how our default tracks look. For example, right over here, we could adjust the size of the name. It's set to 140. So that's how big the name on each track is. We can make it bigger or smaller. Or if we go really small, it'll change to auto. So the longest name in our project 
decides how big our name is. But by default, it's set to 140 right here. And over here, we can adjust the volume size of our tracks. Right now, it's a knob, but we could change it to a fader right here, or how big the fader is by making it bigger. 40, 70, 100, 130, 160, and 190. And we get a nice big fader on our track, if you want that. But again, by default, it's set to a knob. Then over here, we can adjust the input size. Now, if you notice, we're not seeing the input on our tracks. That's by design with layout A. It's hidden unless we put this track into record. Now we can see the input for this track right here. And we can decide how big this is right over here. It's set to 90. We can make it bigger or smaller and barely see it at all. But the default is 90. So it looks like this. But we're only going to see it when the track is in record. Although we could change that in a bit. Then we can adjust the meter size over here. The default is 20. So if I hit play, we can see our meters this wide. We can make them thinner at 10 or 4. We'll make them wider to 40, 80, 160, and 320, which takes up the whole track. But again, the default is 20. Now we could also decide if the meter is on the left or the right. By default, it's on the right. We can move it to the left. Now we can see our meter over here, regardless of what size we choose, either left or right. But we could also choose this option right here, left if armed. And if we choose this option, it's going to be on the right side by default. But if we put the track into record, it goes on the left. So any track in record has the meter on the left side, making it easier to tell which tracks are in record. If they're not, they go on this side. And if they are, they go on this side. But again, by default, they're on the right side either way. So that's this section over here. But down over here, besides what controls we see, this section over here can always hide the controls individually. So if we want to hide the record arm, just hit this. And we don't see the record on button or the monitor, the track name, the volume, the routing, insert effects, and so on. So we could hide or show any of the controls we want. But let's unhide all the controls so we can see them again. Let's check out these other columns. The first one decides what we see if the mixer is visible. By default, we're not going to see the routing or the pan and width if the mixer is visible. So right now, we see the routing and the panning. Let's open the mixer, and we can see the controls go away because our pan is over here and the routing is over here. So Reaper assumes we don't need it in the track control panel. Although if we want it, we can just deselect right here and still see it over here, the routing and the pan. But again, by default, they're both hidden when the mixer is open. But if it's closed, we see those controls again. We can do the same for a cord arm, hide it if the mixer is showing, and now it's hidden in the track control panel. But if we close the mixer, it comes back. So that's this column right here. And this column over here decides what we see or hide when the track is not selected. So by default, just the labels and values are hidden. So if we select our track, we see these labels and values on the track. But if it's not selected, 
we don't. Again, we could turn this off and then see them all the time, but by default, they're hidden. We could do the same thing for any other control we want, like record arm. Now it's hidden. If I select the tracks, we can then see the record arm or the track name. We don't see it unless we select that track. And then finally, we have this column right here, which decides what we see if the track is not armed. So again, by default, monitor, record mode, and input, and meter values are hidden if the track is not armed. So if we arm this track, we then see our input, our record mode, and the input monitoring right here. But with the track out of record, we don't. It just keeps the track control panel a bit cleaner. But if you don't want that, just turn these options off right here. And then we see everything all the time, even if we're not in record. But again, by default, monitor, record mode, input, and meter values are all hidden when the track is not in record. So let's assign some layouts for our tracks. Again, by default, they're all set up to layout A, let's set up the second track to be layout B. We'll select it, then we'll choose the size we want to use. I'll choose 150% right here. And now this track is assigned to layout B. So everything we do over here, change the volume size, only affects that track. If we go back to layout A, it only affects these two tracks, not the second one, because it's assigned to layout B. Let's make the third one layout C. Select it, 150%. Now this one is layout C, and it looks like this, with a bigger meter. But again, we could change everything we just went through for layout C versus B and A. So we can make them look completely different. Now, the last thing I want to show you is that we could dock this window. Just go over here, hit this button, and our layout show up over here. Go back to layout A, which adjusts this track, change the name size or the size of our fader, the meter size. Could all be changed from this window. Switch to B or C and readjust our meter, the input size, and so on. So everything can be adjusted from the docked window, which is really helpful if you want to do this on the fly, while still seeing our tracks at the same time. Now the track control panel decides what we see over here in the track control panel. We could also tab over to the mixer control panel, custom colors, or the envelopes. I want to focus on the mixer control panel, which decides what our mixer looks like. So let's open up the mixer, which looks like this. And everything in this window over here will control what we see over here. And as we can see, there's three separate layouts to choose from, A, B, and C. But that's not to be confused with the track control panel layouts. Those also have three to choose from, but they're completely separate. So layout A is the default for new projects. And we could see that if we go to the options menu and go down here to layouts and choose mixer panel. And right over here, we could see our default. I have mine set to 150% A. We could change it to B or C or use the other sizes. Now we're only going to get three sizes. If you're using a high definition monitor, you're going to get 100%, 75%, or 50%. But I'm using a regular monitor, so I'm going to get 100%, 150%, 
and 200%. And if we choose 200%, all the controls look a lot bigger. Or if we choose 100%, they look a lot smaller. But I'm going to use 150% A. So our controls will be this size, somewhere in between. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the folder indent. The drum track and the instrument track are both folders, with these tracks being the child tracks within them. So as you can tell, these tracks are a bit higher compared to the folders. And that's controlled by the folder indent right here. It defaults to a half, but we can make it bigger and then indent more or smaller. And then indent a bit less. In fact, we could bring it all the way down to none. And these tracks are still in their folders, but they're no longer indented. But let's put it back to half, which is the default. And over here, we could decide if the controls on the track are still aligned. By default, they are. So our fader at full volume is the same height as this one, and the same with the envelopes button. But if we switch it to folder indent, it indents those controls as well. So this fader, even though it's at zero, doesn't align with this one. And the same with the buttons. They indent as well. But by default, they're going to be aligned. Next, we'll check out the borders. By default, there's no borders added to the mixing tracks. So over here, there's no extra color or extended section for each track. But we could add that right over here to the left edge. And the left side has an extra piece with the track color. Or we could do it on the right edge. And the right side has an extended piece with the color. Or we could do it around folders, which is really helpful to quickly see what tracks are in folders. So the left side of our folder has a left edge, and the last track in that folder has a right edge, but nothing in the middle. So it makes it a lot easier to see what tracks are in our folder, especially if you don't indent. So if we change the folder indent to be none, we can still quickly see what tracks are in folders because the color kind of surrounds the entire folder. And if it gets too messy with many sublevels of folders, we can just choose root folders. And then just the first layer of folders will have edges around them. But by default, there's no borders on our tracks. So they look like this. Next, we'll deal with this section over here. This first row decides if we extend our tracks with a sidebar. So if we choose this option here and we select one of our tracks, that track has a sidebar over here, giving us a bigger fader throw over here. And we can see our effects and our sends a lot bigger. And if our track is not selected, we don't get a sidebar unless we choose this option as well. Now all the tracks have a sidebar, whether they're selected or not. But these options are off by default, but we can turn them on. We can do the same thing if our tracks are armed or not. So if we choose this and we arm our tracks, those tracks get a sidebar. If they're not armed, they don't. Or we could choose this one in addition, and they all get a sidebar, if they're armed or not. And again, these two options are off by default, but we can turn them on. Then the next row will narrow our mixer channels. If we choose the first option, it's going to narrow our tracks if they're selected. Or we could choose both, and they're going to be narrow whether they're selected or not. And the same thing if the tracks are armed. Arm this track, and it's narrow. Unarm it, and it's not. 
or we could have it narrow no matter what. Or we could choose these two options at the same time. So if we arm our track, we get a sidebar. Otherwise, they're narrow. We'll do a similar thing with selections. Select these two. And if we select our track, we get a sidebar. Otherwise, they're all narrow. But this is all off by default. Then down over here, we have the meter expansion. This is only going to matter if our tracks have more than two channels. So let's go to this first track under routing. And let's make it six channels. Now this track gets wider to make room for the meter, as we can see right here. If we turn these options off, the track width stays the same. And how wide it gets is based on this section right here. It's plus four. We can make it plus two or none or as high as eight. And these are on by default. But we could turn it off right here so it'll only get wider if we select this track. We'll put it into record. But these two options are on by default. But it's only going to matter if your tracks have more than two channels. Then this row over here decides if we see the element labels on our tracks, the little numbers over here and the labels over here. They're on by default, but we could turn them off, which keeps it a bit cleaner. And we could also only have them on if we select our tracks. And then we see those element labels. And we can do the same thing if the tracks are armed. Arm the track, then we see all the element labels on that track. Take it out of record, and we don't. Unless we choose this option as well, if track is not armed. But these are off by default, and these two are on. So always going to see the element labels if the track is selected or not. So that's this section. So let's assign our tracks to layouts. We'll keep the first three on layout A, and we'll select the next three, choose layout B, and the percentage we want to use. I'll choose 150%, which switches these three tracks to layout B. And as you can see, they're a bit narrower than these, because in layout B, we're using narrow form. Of course, you can change it right here if you want. And then for the last track, the vocal, let's assign that to layout C, which is already set up with an extended sidebar, which of course we could change. We'll choose 150% again. And now that track is assigned to layout C. So we could see it has a sidebar over here. So we have three different layouts within our mixer, which can all look and behave completely differently. Now, besides the layouts in this window, we could also choose some preferences or options. Like right over here, we could show the effects or inserts, which we're seeing right now, or hide them by clicking this. We no longer see the effects inserts in the mixer. Show it again. Then over here, we could show the effects parameters in the mixer as well. By default, they're hidden, but we could choose it. And we could see all the effects parameters in our mixer. But again, they're off by default. And we could also show or hide our sends right here. Hide them or show them in our mixer. And we could also show multiple row mixers when size permits or scroll to select the tracks. And then finally, if we had track icons selected, we could see them in the mixer as well. But there's one more thing I want to show you. If we use the mixer control panel a lot, you might want to dock it. So we can hit this button right here, and that docks the theme adjuster up here. We could do all the same things from here. 
hide the effects, the effects parameters, the sends, adjust the borders for each layout or the sizes or anything else we did in that window. So that's pretty much it. That's the theme adjuster in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Mm -hmm.